Hi guys, Richard Blaine here. Thanks for stopping by my Easy Cooking channel tonight. How's everybody doing? It's Sunday, it's around dinner time, but I'm really not very hungry. I've been taking a lot of requests lately, and I just got back from vacation visiting my brother in Los Angeles. So I'm still kind of in a resting mood. So I thought, what would I like to do for a video today? And then I remembered a good friend of mine, Chef Giovanni of Yellowtail Sushi here in Vegas, recently went on a food trip to Korea. He went there to learn fish skills, prepping, cutting, sharpening knives, using their knives, and he came back and he brought me a little present. He brought me this knife, okay? This is a handmade knife made at the fish market in Korea. It's hand hammered carbon steel, probably has a very high iron content, and the thing about this knife is that it came to me with no edge at all. Now I don't know if that has to do with exporting the knife out of the country or not, or if the maker of the knife just gave you the basic geometry to put your own kind of edge, but this knife can be sharpened either 50-50 the European way or on a single sided bevel somewhat like the Japanese way. Tonight I'm going to sharpen this knife on a right side single bevel, somewhat of a hamaguri grind, a single bevel grind, and it's going to take a little time to do, so as usual YouTube 15 minutes, let's get going. I'll see you on the other side. Okay guys, so what I'm doing here is I'm going to start off on my 220 grit diamond. I want the edge to be on the right side of this knife, so I'm right handed. So holding it in front of me, left, right. So right here. Now, you can just lay the knife down if you have one like this and push it up and find your angle. But I don't want it to be quite that wide, so you figure about 90 about 45, about 20 right about here, about 15 right about here. Remember, on the rocking motion going back and forth, you don't want to flex your wrists, okay? You want to keep your wrists nice and straight, keep your fingers down by the edge, you're not going to get cut, okay? And you grind on the upstroke, relax on the backstroke. So there's about 15 right here, and I'm going to give a few light strokes on the 220. Okay. just to see where the grind goes. There we go, it's getting started. So I'm going to get to work on this 220 grit stone. This is going to take quite some time, probably almost an hour to put the kind of edge on this knife that I want, but as usual with YouTube 15. So just hang on tight and I'll be moving grit through grit. Okay guys, I've been working on this knife for about 45 minutes because like I told you, this had no blade, it was completely blank. Now I don't know if you can see it in the light, but here is the Hamaguri style grind, the single edge. If you can see it, okay. It's kind of difficult, okay. You can see that's hand hammered, there are a lot of dips in the edge here because it's all hand hammered, okay. But the basic edge, there it is. And I've created the wire edge that I've talked about so much in the past. And so right now I'm going to lock that off and I'm going to move on to a 325 grit stone and we'll continue forward. Okay, I locked off that wire edge using a 2x4 and using the diamond. Now right here, this blue dot, that signifies that this is a 325 grit stone. It sounds less abrasive than the 220. I'm going to get to work on this knife and micro this down a bit and then remove the bevel and we'll continue on forward. I have no doubt this is a long arduous process on a completely dull knife but the benefits are well worth it. Okay guys, I don't know if you can see that edge. It's kind of hard. But right now, I have to take off that wire. You see that wire edge across the bottom? So on this 325, I'm just lightly going to stroke that wire edge, that burr, off the other side, making a very small micro bevel. It will be a very small micro bevel on this knife. Okay, just lopping it off lightly. 
to go to the next grit. And then I take it on a piece of 2x4, if you can see. There we go. Then I take it on a piece of 2x4, and I run the knife into the 2x4, and it removes the rest of that burr and leaves me pretty much, hear that? A hard edge. Okay? I'm going to move on to 600 grit and then we'll move forward. Okay guys, so this stone I'm working on is a 600 grit as denoted by the red dot on this DMT plate. And I'm going to start the whole process all over again. Okay. What I'm looking for is that wire edge. Each time I lock the wire edge off and go to the next higher grit, I want to create that wire edge again. Okay, Replacing the scratches from the more aggressive grit with scratches of a finer grit, which will keep on taking this edge down and thinning it out. I can see the edge starting already. I don't know if you can. Okay, Strokes have to be nice and even. Keep the wrist straight. Don't let them bend. And I'm going to work this on the 600 grit and get that burr and then I'm going to lop it off and then we're going to move to 1200. Okay guys, I'm done with the 600 grit. I don't know if you can see it, but there's a fine wire edge. Okay? And the edge here is becoming more pronounced and, and more polished. See it? Alright. So, what I need to do is I need to take that wire edge off the back of the knife. Okay? At a very high degree. It's going to create a micro bevel. A few strokes. And then I'll remove the burr with a piece of 2 by 4 which usually just means that I'm going to go to the end of the wood here and run it across my 2x4 and it leaves me a nice hard edge. We're not quite ready to shave with it. I'm moving on to 1200 and I'll see you in a bit. Okay guys, I've polished the blade even further on 1200 and now I need to remove that micro bevel off the back. So I'm going to do that, and then I'm going to move on to my ceramic stones. Okay guys, now, at the moment, I'm doing some final polishing. This is my Spyderco Fine Ceramic. I'm going to position on the wood, stop the wood from jiggling, and I'm doing some final polishing strokes, and then I'm going to lop the bevel off the back side of this knife. Okay, it's getting nice and shiny. But there's still a back bevel there. Okay, anyway, I'm going to lop that wire edge off. But right now, I'm doing some final polishing. The Spyderco Fine is about a 1500, maybe an 1800. Ceramics are like this aren't measured in grit, they're measured in density. So I'm going to do some final polishing because as you can see it's getting nice and shiny. Okay. Yep. And then we'll move forward. Okay guys. I've worked the edge on the Spyderco Ceramic Blue. It's hair popping sharp right now. But I'm going to take it to the ultra fine Spyderco Ceramic and put an even finer mirror on it going to make this a slicing edge for fish, not a cutting edge. Okay, I'm going to continue on with this, and then I'm going to go to my old standby, the Surgical Black Arkansas, and then maybe I'll even do a strop or quick tune-up on a ceramic rod. So stay tuned. Okay guys, so I'm done with the synthetics and this knife is just, it's sharp now, but I'm going to give it some strokes 
on my surgical black Arkansas. Okay. Now, people have asked me, what is the grit of a surgical black Arkansas? And the problem is, is that you don't measure surgical white, or excuse me, translucent white, or surgical black Arkansas in terms of grit. They're no vaculite. They're measured in terms of density. Okay, the density is never 100% uniform because it's a natural stone. Okay, but you do feel the stone grab the blade once you've made the blade what you want it to be. Puts a nice polish. But if I had to equate a grit with my particular black archie, I would probably say that this is about a 4,000. I usually don't like to go beyond 4,000 when sharpening. People like to get way interesting, 6,000, 8,000, 10,000, not necessary. So I'm going to give some final strokes on my surgical black archie, and then I'll think about doing a strop. So hang on tight. Okay guys, so here it is. The knife is done. If you can see how shiny that blade is, I'm getting used to this new camera, okay? But the knife is done, okay? If you can see that blade. And I guess you're waiting to see me shave, and I already did, except when I uploaded the film, the last two scenes of me shaving disappeared somehow. And I literally don't have any hair left, so, you know, I don't know if you're going to be able to see, but the hair is just sliding off and gliding off as this knife is so razor sharp it's ridiculous okay the hair just falling okay even on the other side on the micro beveled side okay here we are with the camera again okay hair is just sliding off okay okay even on the micro beveled side doesn't matter who I gotta watch out coming in that direction okay just coming right off, okay? People are gonna wonder what the hell happened to me, okay? You can even hear it, okay? So it's a lot of hair that I gotta clean up. And I know that you're gonna see a little greasy spot in the middle of the lens. I didn't know that was there either until I uploaded and edited, so I just cleaned it. I do apologize, okay? Really sharp, okay? Really sharp. It's gonna get messy in here really quick. Okay, really sharp, really sharp, okay, sharp enough to do sashimi, Kobe beef, anything you want, sharp enough to do anything you want, Kobe beef, if you can get Kobe beef, okay, but the knife will do whatever you want, okay, make some of those nice feather cuts I'm always talking about, okay, and then, Lop it straight off. Lop it straight off. I appreciate you watching. This is Richard Blaine. I'll see you on the next video. Take care.